behind the hacking of the U.S. elections, dismissing findings from the intelligence community. After the CIA concluded that Russia intervened in the election to help Trump win the presidency, his transition team slammed the agency, saying these are the same people that said Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Well, joining me now is John Nixon, a former CIA senior analyst. He has a new a compelling book out. It's called Debriefing the President, the Interrogation of Saddam Hussein. He is in studio with us now. It's a fitting day to have you here. The 10th anniversary today is of Saddam Hussein's yes. execution, notably December 30th of 2006. You were the first CIA officer to interrogate Saddam Hussein when he was finally taken into custody. Just in simple terms, what are your memories of that moment of being face to face with this man? Well, if anybody had ever said to me one day I'd be talking to Saddam Hussein, <laughs> I would have said they're crazy. And then five years after I joined the CIA, that's exactly what happened. And he was, uh, it was an intense an almost surreal experience at times. He could, he had, um, he was, could be very funny and very charming. One of the most charismatic individuals I've ever met in my life. However, as we began to talk and get to know each other, he also became, I also saw another side of him, which was sort of a vicious, nasty, arrogant side. You said he was, this was striking, thoroughly unlikable, but that you came away with a grudging respect. How so? That is, a, that is a view of mine that evolved over time. Certainly when I left, when I left him in 2004, I remember thinking, gosh, I'm, I'm so glad I don't have to talk to him anymore. But on the other hand, when I, 10 years later, after seeing what has happened in Iraq and what has become of the country, I, I just came away with this grudging respect that he was able to keep this together for so long. As the bottom line, as you wrote, he said he told you once, before me there was only bickering and arguing. I ended all of that and made people agree. Playing Monday morning quarterback, right? Right now, what would have happened if there was a different outcome, if we had left him in power? You say that's one of the provocative questions that needs to be considered. Yes. Um, I think if Saddam were still in power, you know, he'd be probably getting on in years. Maybe he'd not be alive or whatever. And there would have been a transition to maybe a new generation of Saddam's or what have you. But it would have been an Iraqi solution. And that would have been much better than the American solution that was imposed on the country and all the chaos that ensued. What are the lessons that the incoming administration can learn right now from your experiences and from our experience broadly as a country invading Iraq. Okay, well, one is that whether people are our friends or our enemies, we need to talk to everybody. You know, having an embassy in Iraq might have really helped us. You say even those leaders we abhor. Yes, absolutely. You know, something we've talked to bad people before, we can talk to them again. And you know something, the other thing is that the U.S. military does many great things for us, but sometimes problems need diplomatic solutions or political solutions, and we shouldn't be reaching for our, our M-16 every time a problem erupts. Let me ask you about Donald Trump and some of the language he's used. He has made, he hasn't disguised his uh, dismissal at times of the intelligence yes. community. In 21 days, the intel community, he's going to be their primary customer. Yeah. How does this relationship evolve? How do we, what should we anticipate, I guess? What is the challenge for both sides? Well, both sides, despite all the rhetoric that we hear, both sides really need each other. And to be honest with you, um, both sides have a unique opportunity to sort of wipe the slate clean and start afresh. And I think that one of the things that President Trump could do would be to signal his support for the intelligence community and also maybe tell them that he, he wants to protect them and keep them out of politics. And th what the CIA can do is say, yes, please, and we will give you our best advice always. And we don't want to play politics either. Uh, the CIA does best when it leaves politics at the door. As you say, the bottom line is there are improvements to be made on both sides going Absolutely. forward right now. Absolutely. John Nixon, the book is, it's an incredible story. And on this day, 10 years since his execution, even more timely. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate